Hi, my name is Art Adams. I am a Cinema Lens Specialist here at Airy in Burbank, and we're in our creative space to illustrate um, some lighting techniques that will help you light for live stream, especially if you're in a, an environment that is maybe not terribly photogenic, it's less than ideal, and you have a limited number of lights. For example, right now, we have two Sky Panel S30s, and that's all we're gonna use today. Uh, we're gonna add a bounce card at one point, and we're gonna add some diffusion at one point, but otherwise, we're just gonna move lights around and dim them, make some brighter, make some darker. And we're gonna be able to do quite a lot, but for me, the most important thing is getting the lights in the right places to light a face, because there's lots of different ways to light faces. And we all wanna look good, and not every face takes light the same way. So I'm gonna show you some strategies that should work for just about everyone that you're gonna photograph, and hopefully for yourself as well. Uh, this is Cassini Lapo. She is a uh, marketing development specialist uh, for the lighting side of our company. She has agreed to model for me, and she is also going to be controlling the lights with Stellar off of an iPad. Stellar is our uh, software app that's designed to control sky panel lights remotely over a, a network connection. So what I've done to start is show you how not to light yourself. This is a, a, a technique that I see in a lot of broadcast studios, and it works great for a lot of things, like for news and talk shows and things like that. But if you're in a situation where the camera's in one spot, and looking at you from one perspective, you have the freedom to move lights around and do a little bit more with them. Whereas if you're in a big studio environment with lots of cameras, maybe you have to do things a little differently. Let me uh, light a little bit more flatly so the cameras can always get a good shot no matter where they are. In this case, the camera's in one spot. So right now we've got two lights at 45 degree angles and 45 degrees to the camera. So this is basically two out of the traditional three points of lighting that they teach in film school. Um, it's serviceable, but I think we can do better because this is a very flat image to me. There's not much three dimensionality to it. It's just very, um, it's, it's fine, but it's not great. Now, we've put Cassinia in front of a white background because in a lot of situations you're gonna end up against a white background because there's a lot of buildings and a lot of rooms that are painted white or very light. Uh, the most important thing is, for me, is to pull the person away from that background so that the light falls off. And that way the background becomes a little bit darker. Having a darker background than the subject means the subject is gonna pop out more. You feel the separation, you feel that, you know, there's a person and then you feel at a distance behind them is the wall. If everything is stacked up together, the image tends to be less uh, attractive. So we want a little bit of distance so the background goes a little bit darker. So now I'm gonna show you a little bit of modeling here. Uh, Ksenia, could you take the left light down? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna dim one of these two lights. Now, for me, that's better already. Now this is traditional portrait lighting. And what that means is the light is, it's high, but it's coming down in such a way that there's a, a nose shadow that falls in what we call the smile line, which is the corner of the nose to the corner of the mouth. The kind of adjustment you might make is, you know, to lengthen or shorten that nose shadow. If you're trying to reduce the size of the nose shadow, you might bring the light around closer to the camera and then it'll move closer to the nose. If you want a more contrasty look, you might move the light farther around and then you'll lengthen that shadow. So it's worth experimenting just to see what happens. It's a nice look. It's not significantly different, but what you might notice is that there's now only one chin shadow which is nice. In traditional portrait lighting, um, you generally only feel one source, and if there's another light filling in the shadows, it's very soft and diffuse, and it doesn't throw an extra shadow. And it just feels more natural that way. It's as if light is coming through a window, because if, if you're sitting next to a window and light is coming in, you don't see another shadow coming back the other direction. And also, since I've moved this light closer to the lens, she's got a nice little eye light. Now, we can do more here, because even though this is really nice, we could actually introduce a little bit more, uh, I guess, roundness. Because right now we have a light coming from one side here, and then another light coming from the lens filling in the other side. We basically have two tonal values. So what I'm gonna do is try to create more tonal value by jumping this light to the other side of the camera. Now what this has done, and it's, it's a subtle effect, but it's there. And on someone who has a, a very round face, you'll see this very strongly. But we now have a, a tonal value here. We have another tonal value here in her nose shadow. 
and then on the fill side cheek, it's dropping off considerably more than it was before. I found this works really well. For example, if this was a real window over here, and I wanted to uh, smooth that look out, uh, putting another light on the same side as that window, or in other words, uh, in the industry we call it filling from the key side. So if the lens is here and there's a window here, instead of putting the fill over here, you would put it over here. And it basically wraps that source around. Now we're going to go and make a big source because this is, this is really nice. I really like this look. But what we can do is we can soften that nose shadow even more and go for more of a commercial look. So this is where we, we're going to add some diffusion. Let me do that right now. Mask, please. Now let's bring this left light up a little bit. There we go. Look at that. So that's a really nice look. And we can see what happened to the nose shadow. It kind of uh, it softened a fair bit. Um, I can make this a little bit softer. Uh, uh, but this looks pretty good. Now what I've done is I've taken two smaller lights and combined them into a bigger source. Uh, a larger source is going to be softer. And the closer it is to a person, the softer it's going to be. And in this case, you know, having those two smaller sources um, that I showed you previously, you're always going to have that strong nose shadow. And the harder that shadow is, the more precisely it has to be placed for someone to look good. You know, it really does want to fall into that smile line. But if you make the source very soft and diffuse, then you don't necessarily need to be that careful. And anyone can sit in there and they'll look great. The other nice thing about using a nice big piece of diffusion is you can see this glow in her cheek and in her forehead and her nose. It's a, it's a specular highlight. It's a reflection of the light source. And that's really interesting. You don't get that from a, a hard source that's farther away. You don't feel it as that, at that much. But in a diffuse source that's just out of frame, you really get some nice highlights. And it's, it, there's a lot of tonality here. So I, I feel like um, it's a very rich image, and it's a very flattering image. Now, I've got one more trick to show you. And this is the one that works for everyone. And it's similar to what we started with, but it's not exactly the same. Um, traditionally, we like to get the light off to one side of the camera or the other so that we have a little shadow, because that shadow is what creates a sense of three-dimensionality. But if you really want to just flatter someone's face, light coming directly from the camera is the way to do it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a big bounce source over the back of the camera, and we're going to see what that looks like. Yeah, I mean, that's, why don't you come down to 80% on that? You're just a little bit too bright. While Cassini is doing that, I'll point out the diffusion I used was uh, grid cloth. Uh, you can buy it in a fabric store. It's also known as sail cloth or ripstop nylon. But you can also use a, a bleached bed sheet. I mean, it just needs to be white, neutral, and f reasonably dense. You don't want a ton of color, because that's just going to make the person look a different color. I, I tend to go with the, uh, something that's very neutral. And this is, this is a really nice portrait shot. And you know, notice that it's a very different feel. Uh, she, you know, Cassini has a nice chin shadow, and we still have these specular highlights that we saw from the diffusion from the side. But now it's almost as if uh, the glow is in the center of her face. It's almost like she's glowing from within. It's a really nice look. This is similar to what you might get with a ring light. It's not exactly the same, but it's similar. And if you have someone who's very sensitive about, say, their cheek, if you raise this light up, or raise this bounce card up, you can extend that chin shadow, just like that. So it's a, this is a, a, a nice way to make anyone look good very quickly. It's not always the most interesting because there's not a lot of contrast, but sometimes it's more important to make the, the person who's on camera feel good. And uh, as long as you've pulled them out from this back wall far enough, 
and you have a little bit of difference of tonality between the back wall and their face, you're going to be fine. That's what I wanted to show you, and I hope that's helpful. Uh, if you have any questions, please get in touch, and uh, we'll be happy to help you figure out uh, your own remote uh, workflow uh, solution. Uh, and we're just really here to help you succeed and to look good. I mean, that's what we're all about. We make lights, cameras, lenses, but it's all about making people look good. So once again, my name is Art Adams, Cassini Lapo. Thank you very much for joining us.